Oyo Oito Oimatha Oise Ointo. What is that? Well, I have my Greek final coming up, and I'm trying to master the optative mood, but I just can't seem to wrap my head around it, all its uses. How do you wrap your head around something? I mean, I can't really change the shape of mine. Well, not like that, not in a literal sense. That that phrase for wrapping your head around something, it's more of a description of what happens in your brain. Because, like, the information is entering my brain, and my head is kind of wrapped around my brain. Does that make sense? Sort of. Yeah. You know, this kind of reminds me of a conversation Jesus had with some of the religious teachers. He was using some physical examples to explain something that wasn't really physical, like information, but the teacher just couldn't really understand. So, oh, actually, I think that's the Bible story for today's lesson. Let's go see what Auntie Julia has to say. Thanks, Abby. Hey, you guys. Happy Sunday. I'm happy to see you guys, and I'm excited for today's lesson. We are going to start by reviewing our big picture question for the unit. What makes people special? Do you remember the answer? People are special because we were made in God's image as male and female to know him. God made us in his image, and we are meant to have a close relationship with God. But our sin separates us from him. And the only way for us to get back to a perfect relationship with a perfect God is through a perfect savior. And God loves us so much that he provided that savior for us in his son, Jesus Christ. So over the past couple of weeks, we have been looking at stuff that happened kind of early in Jesus's ministry. A couple weeks ago, we saw people came to Jesus and he healed them. And Jesus' miracles showed that he was the Messiah or the promised savior. Now, last week we saw that when Jesus taught in Nazareth, he announced himself as the Messiah. But if you remember, we learned kind of early on that Jesus wanted the focus of his ministry to be his teaching. Well, today we're gonna get to hear a little bit more of Jesus' teaching. In today's story, Jesus teaches a Jewish teacher a lesson about how to get into heaven. And what Jesus tells this man completely challenges everything he thought he knew about getting into heaven. And speaking of challenges, before we go to our story, we have a few challenges for you guys. So we're gonna head over to Holly and see how you guys do. Hey guys, I'm Holly. I have an activity today that's called Try Hard. I'm gonna challenge you guys with some activities and you have to try hard to complete them. Okay. I want you guys to do a push-up. <laughs> Good job. Now, a jumping jack. That one's easy. How about a squat? How about a high five? Oh, killing it. Oh. Now, this is gonna be really hard. I need you guys to lift up that wall. hard and working to get better at something is good. But knowing when you can't do something and you need God's help is also really important. Some people think that if they work hard enough to follow all of God's rules, they get to live with him in heaven. In fact, in Jesus' day, the Jewish leaders and teachers thought that if they followed the law of Moses, they would be accepted by God. So they spent their entire lives studying the word and trying to get their entire community to obey. Obeying God is super important and you should do it but it's not what gets you into heaven. No matter how hard you try, you cannot get into heaven by yourself. In today's Bible story, Jesus has a conversation with a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Jewish leader and teacher. In this conversation, Jesus teaches Nicodemus what actually gets you into heaven. Let's go take a look. I got it! I got it! I got it! Oh! Oh! Hello, kids! My name is Pockets, and I'm just enjoying this beautiful day that God has made here at the beach. I was just about to read a story about Jesus. Would you like to read a story with me? Well, alright, let's do it. Our story is from John chapter 3. Let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. 
it is. All right, let's dive on in. Good night, Jesus. Good night, Jesus. Good night, Jesus. Good night. Jesus was in Jerusalem, where he had traveled to for the Passover feast. While he was there, a religious leader named Nicodemus came to visit him. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, someone who spent a lot of time studying the law of Moses and worked really, really hard to obey every part of it. Phew, that sounds like a lot of work. He had heard about Jesus and the amazing things he was doing and wanted to know more about him. So he came to Jesus at night, in private, and he spoke to him. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God because no one can perform the miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus, I tell you the truth. No one can see God's kingdom unless they are born again. Born again? How can someone be born when they are old? They can't enter their mother's tummy and be born a second time, can they? Nicodemus was very confused by what Jesus had said. For one thing, Nicodemus believed that the way to get into heaven was by strictly following all of the rules, laws, regulations, stipulations, protocols, processes, orders, steps, traditions, instructions, and commands. Whew. He worked really hard to know all the laws and follow them as perfectly as possible. But now, Jesus was saying the only way to get to heaven was to do something that didn't make any sense. So, Jesus explained. What I tell you is true. No one can enter God's kingdom unless they are born of water and wind. What is born from the flesh is flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised when I tell you, you must all be born from above. Nicodemus was having a hard time understanding what Jesus was saying because he was only focused on physical things. Jesus explained that physical life, life on earth, comes at birth from our parents, but physical life is short and will definitely end. Spiritual life comes only from the Holy Spirit and it is much more important because people who are born of the Spirit get to live forever and be with God. But Nicodemus still didn't understand. But I still don't understand. You are Israel's teacher, but you don't understand these things? I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what I know and what I've seen, but you don't accept what I say. I have spoken to you about earthly things, and you do not believe. So how will you believe when I speak to you about heavenly things? Hmm. The only one who has gone up to heaven is the one who has come down from heaven. The Son of Man. Oh, I've read that before. Let's see. Oh, right, here it is. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. Let's read it. Who has gone up into heaven and then come down? That sounds like what Jesus said. Who can hold the wind in his hand? Who can gather up the waters in his coat? Who has decided where the ends of the earth will be? What is his name? And what is his son's name? Surely you know. Oh, I do know. I do know his son's name. Do you know? That's right. Jesus is his name. So Jesus was trying to help Nicodemus understand who he is by getting him to think about the scriptures he had been studying so hard. Isn't Jesus a great teacher? 
Let's see. Mm. All right, back to our story. Jesus went on to tell Nicodemus the main reason that he had come down from heaven. Moses lifted up a metal snake on a pole in the desert for all people to see it and be healed. The Son of Man must also be lifted up. Then everyone who believes in him can have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not die, but instead live forever. God did not send his Son into the world to pronounce judgment on the world. He sent his Son to save the world. Anyone who believes in him is not found guilty, but anyone who does not believe is already found guilty. Nicodemus wanted eternal life with God, but he learned from Jesus that there was nothing he could do to earn it himself, just like being born. I didn't have to do any work to be born. I didn't make my super cool pocket. Jesus told Nicodemus who he is by leading him to the scriptures in the Bible to think about. Jesus was helping Nicodemus to understand and believe in him. Because when we believe in Jesus, we are born again. We become totally new. God becomes our daddy and he gives all of his children eternal life. I'm so happy to be a child of God, aren't you? I'm going to love him forever! Well, thanks for reading a Bible story with me. I better get out of the sun before I get burnt! know before Jesus started teaching he was a carpenter? Carpenters at the time didn't usually know very much about religion, which is why so many people were so amazed at Jesus's teaching. Not only did this common man know so much about God, but he taught with an authority that was way different from the religious teachers who had studied this most of their lives. And most of the religious leaders at the time completely rejected Jesus and his teachings, but not Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a teacher of the law, and he was also a member of the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish, Jewish government. Uh, but Nicodemus saw what Jesus was doing, and he heard what Jesus was teaching, and he knew God had to be with Jesus. So he approached him to learn more from him. Now, like most of the Jews at the time, Nicodemus believed that the way to get into heaven was by obeying God's laws. So when Jesus started talking to him and saying that he had to be born again to get into heaven, not only was it completely different from what Nicodemus thought he knew, but it didn't make any sense. When Jesus talked about rebirth, Nicodemus was only thinking about the physical birth. He had a really hard time understanding the difference between spiritual life and physical life. And it's understandable. I mean, we all kind of do the same thing. We have such a tendency to focus on what we can see and what we can hear and what we can touch. And we start to think that that's all there is. But Jesus wanted Nicodemus and us to understand that there is a spiritual life separate from the physical world. And it's really important. Now, did you catch when Jesus talked about Moses raising up the snake? So that's a reference to a time when the Israelites were wandering through the desert after they'd been freed from Egypt. The Israelites had sinned against God, and so God sent poisonous snakes that were biting them and people were dying. The Israelites repented from their sin and they prayed to God to please take the snakes away. So God told Moses to make a metal snake and put it at the top of a pole. And when the Israelites looked at the metal snake, they were healed. You guys, this is a picture of Jesus. The snakes are like sin. And Jesus is how God saves us from sin and death. When we look to what Jesus did on the cross and we put our faith in him, our sinful hearts are healed and we are reborn. Notice how the Israelites didn't have to do any work to be healed. All they had to do was look at the snake. It's the same with us. We need new life. And there is no work or anything that we can do to earn it on our own. Spiritual life, eternal life, is a free gift from God. 
and it only comes from his spirit. All we have to do is look to the cross and accept God's gift by believing in his son, Jesus. So this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, it's where our Bible verse comes from, John 3, 16, which is a basic breakdown of God's great plan. One, God loves us. Two, he sent his son to save us. And three, anyone who believes in his son will have eternal life. It's the best. Why don't we head over to Pastor Pete? You guys can practice it to end out our lesson today. Uh, oh, man, I'm just trying to lift this wall here. Oh, hello. It's kind of impossible to lift a wall, isn't it? But you know what's not impossible? Our memory verse. So let's try it today. Do you remember? It's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Okay, keep practicing that this week. And also, make sure that you join us on our Kailua Community Church Kids page, um, our group. You can also, if you're local, join our Church Center app, KCC Kids. And you can go there and see some discussion questions that you can talk about with your family this week. And I guess we'll just see you next week. So have a great week. God bless you. Aloha. Thank you.